Hi, if you've got a 600 series transoceanic or an 8G005 series transoceanic, you need a Z1 battery to power part of it. This video will show you how to make a Z1 battery using a length of PCB pipe, a couple connectors from Radio Shack, and a C cell. For the body of our Z1 battery, we're going to use 1 inch diameter PCB pipe. And for the ends, we'll use 3 quarter inch PCB pipe. You'll need to sand it or turn it a little bit to make it fit inside the 1 inch diameter. And for the end caps, you'll need some sheet styrene from your local hobby shop. This is the connector that we're going to use from Radio Shack. Our first step is going to be to cut a couple notches in the 1 inch by 3 quarter inch PCB pipe to mount the Radio Shack connector. And we'll use a mill end bit in our drill press to cut two notches 180 degrees apart from each other and about a quarter inch wide, just wide enough for the tabs on that connector to fit in. And there you can see it fits. Now we're still going to need to trim some of the connector but we'll do that in a later step. Now we're ready to go ahead and glue that piece to an end cap along with the bottom end piece as well and I'll use super glue for that. Okay, the glue is dried and I'm going to use a little piece of uh, one inch PCB pipe, a scrap piece, as a guide to round off these end caps so that they fit the barrel of the body uh, perfectly. And we'll use a belt sander and a lace to do that. Finish up the job on the lathe. Here I'm using a needle file to do the finishing touches. And we got a pretty good fit there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we need to cut a little bit off of the uh, Radio Shack connector. I'm basically going to cut it back even with the uh, tabs, about a quarter inch, and I'll use a little mini hacksaw for that. And then once it's finished, we're going to glue it into the uh, one inch end piece that will become the connector end of the battery. So there I've snapped it into place. It's a good fit. And then we'll use hot glue in the uh, cavities between the each side of the uh, housing and the uh, connector. Now this is how we're going to get our battery contacts. We're going to just use the ends of a C-cell holder, the positive and the negative ends, and we'll cut those off with our hacksaw just like uh, we did before with the uh, Radio Shack connector. And you want to be careful you don't cut the wires. And we need to shape the uh, positive and negative terminals we just cut off that C-cell holder to uh, match the uh, end pieces. So we'll use our belt sander to round them off. Use a little scrap of um, PCB pipe as a guide. And now we're going to use super glue again to glue the negative terminal to the end piece, the uh, half inch end piece that will be the negative terminal. On the positive terminal, we're going to cut a couple notches there. 
180 degrees opposite each other for the wires to pass through down into the body of the Z1 battery. Okay, a Radio Shack connector is uh, dried and it's uh, time to drill two holes and we'll use the uh, the uh, connector as a guide down through the end cap. The connector pins are two different sizes. One is 5 30 seconds and the other is 3 16 So we'll drill two holes, one of each size. So down through the end cap. And now we'll see if our male pins on the cable that's in your radio will fit. Okay, looks like a perfect fit there. Now we need to go and insert the female pins that came with your connector into that housing. And it's just a snap fit. There are a couple little tabs on those pins that hold it into place once you snap them in. And then we'll use a scratch all through the uh, holes in the end cap to enlarge those pins so that they're the proper size to mate with the male pins of the uh, cable in your radio. A uh, good fit. Okay, before we can finish up, we need to route and groove down through the body of the V1 battery. And the purpose of this groove is for the wire coming from the negative terminal to pass up through the body and connect to the negative pin on the connector head. Now we're ready to connect the positive battery terminal to the uh, connector end and we'll connect it to the larger pin, the one that uh, matches up with the larger hole in the end cap. Uh, first I'm going to crimp the wire into the pin. There we go, it's in place. And then we'll just use a little bit of solder there to uh, permanently make that connection. And then we'll do the negative end. Okay, now I'm passing the negative wire up through the body and we'll trim that wire a little bit and then solder it in place to the smaller pin on the connector end. Okay, our battery contacts are wired, uh, soldered into place so now I can glue the positive contact down onto the end piece. I'll use super glue for that. Okay, I'll just hold it in place there for a few seconds and then I'll put a clamp on it and we'll set it aside to dry. Okay, I've already marked uh, and drilled two screw holes in either end of the battery. Those are to secure the bottom and the top end pieces in place. And what I'm getting ready to do now is just countersink those uh, screw holes so that the screw heads will be flush with the body of the Z1 battery. We need for the label to be able to slide off of it when we want to change batteries. Okay, our screws are in and now it's getting time to test this. We'll take this old tape off. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to put a C-cell in there. Make sure the wire's in the groove. Okay, now we're ready to plug in our cable and see if it works. Yep, our little test light came on. 
Next we're going to clean the body of the Z1 battery with some alcohol. And then I'm going to take it outside and paint it with this black spray paint. The original battery was black and here is ours all finished. Here the final step is to uh, pick a label for our battery. There's an Avaretti. That's an early Z1 battery label. And here's a late type of Z1 battery label that would be appropriate for the 600 series. So let's use that one. We'll cut it out. And make sure it's sized properly. Sometimes you have to trim the label a little bit. And then we wrap it around the battery. And apply a little bead of hot glue along one edge of the label. And there we have it, a complete working reproduction Z1 battery.